Okay, hello. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the Catholic monarchs. Okay, this is the first of the uh, three or four videos that we are going to do to explain units two and three from your book. We are going to focus on what happened in politics, and that is why it's got, we are, I have divided into three. Today, Catholic monarchs. Next week, Charles the uh, first, Carlos I and Felipe II, Philip II. And the last part that we are going to focus on will be the differences between the two political systems that are going to be developed during the modern age. Okay, the parliamentarism and the absolutism. So this week we are going to focus on Isabel y Fernando, the Catholic monarchs in the Iberian Peninsula. As I told you, you have to practice taking notes and then do the corner notes that you have all the information about it, how to do it, and the best way to do it in your notebook on the Padlet. So, if you are ready, I am going to follow with this presentation, with this PowerPoint presentation, and I'm going to try to explain just a little bit who were they. Okay? So, ready? So, first of all, before I'm we're moving on, who were the Catholic monarchs, I want you to review one thing that we study in Unit 1, and it's this graph. This is one of the graphs that you have to make on your notebook, and it was like putting on this wheel relating the different events of demographic and economic recovery in the 15th century. This is so important because we cannot think about the main changes in politics without understanding what happened in the population and the economy that makes that recovery. Okay, if you remember from the Middle Ages, we have like we went down due to the Black Death and all the economy problems, etc. But during the late 14th and 15th century, we were recovering. Okay. Do you remember, okay, due to the disappearance of the major epidemies, okay, we were talking about this, the birth rate increased. So if we have that the birth rate is increasing because we don't have these huge epidemies, these huge diseases that kill most part of the population, the population is going to grow, okay? This population growth is related in a part with the rise in demand, okay, they need more products, they need more products uh, mainly in agriculture because they need to be fed, they need food to eat, okay, so the agriculture is going to improve. New products, new techniques are going to be developed in order to feed this growing population. Also, they're going as they, they, there is going to be more population and better economy. It's going to be an improvement of trade and shipping. Okay, so these people, this growth of population, is going to need more and more and more. So trade is going to be improved. Also, not only trade, not only products that came from abroad, but also it's going to be an increase in production of handmade goods in the proper cities and the proper. Um, countries, okay. All these movements of economy, okay, thanks to the agricultural surplus, thanks to improvements in trade and the handmade artisans, etc., is going to develop a banking system. The people is going to need money to buy products and investments in order to trade with more products. This is the origin of what we call the mercantilism or capitalism mercantilism that it's one of them that it's the main economy that is going to develop now from now on okay so all these characteristics that we said in unit one you need to review in order to understand what happened in politics in this okay so only thing that we study in unit one that we need to review is how is the monarchy going to change in the 15th century how they're going to move from a medieval monarchy what were the main characteristics of the medieval monarchy and what are the now the new characteristics of the authoritarian monarchy. Okay, so one of the main things is that they are going to depend less on the nobility. If you remember from the uh, feudal, uh, feudal, from the medieval ages, okay, the 
feudalism or feudal society were the one on we have to base it. Okay, these relationships were on they depend on each other. Remember that the king is the primus inter pares, is not more than a noble, so they depend on this nobility in order to control their territories, to apply, apply the laws, to collect taxes, to defend their territory against other, all the things that make the feudalism at the end make that the monarchy is not so powerful. But this, during the 15th century, the different monarchs, not only in Spain, not only, not only in the Iberian Peninsula, but also in all Europe, mainly France and England, are going to start changing. How they're going to change from a medieval okay, or a feudal monarchy to an authoritarian monarchy, doing all these things that you have here. The first one is going to try to decrease the influence of the nobility. In order to decrease the influence of the nobility, they're going to reform the administration. They're going to create a better administration. The, all the functions of the administration, instead of being uh, held or led by the nobility, they're going to create what we call the public servants, okay, los funcionarios. So all these are going to depend directly on the monarchy, so they are going to trust in them instead of the nobility. Also, they are going to reduce the role of the nobility by not summon the Cortes, okay, the parliament. They are not going to ask them for anything. And they are going to be helped by the bourgeoisie, this new social class that is going to appear and is going to acquire more and more and more prestige because they have money. Okay? This creating a better administration, administration is going to uh, be very helpful also because they are going to collect taxes and they are going to unificate. They are going to unite all the laws of all the kingdom. Instead of having different king, uh, different laws and different taxes in each territory where the nobility rules, now we're going to have a centralized and, and unification of all the kingdom. At least they're going to try. Obviously, this is not something that happened from one moment, from one day to another. There is a process that is going to begin now in the 15th century and it's going to lead us until the 18th century, where the absolutism is the most important. All the things that they are going to develop is the diplomacy. Okay, in order to reduce the wars against the, the, among the different kingdoms in Europe, they're going to develop through ambassadors. They're going to send ambassadors in the different kingdoms and marry it, marrying their daughters and their sons with the different sons and daughters and the heirs of uh, Europe, they're going to improve diplomacy. Also, in order to not depend on the army of the nobility, they're going to create their own permanent army. So the wars, they're going to be led by their sons. Okay, so these are two things that you need, first of all, before we understand who, uh, who are the Catholic monarchs, first you need to understand. Also, another thing that you need to know is where are we, okay? In the uh, Iberian Peninsula history, if we started last year, we were living in the Reconquista, okay? The, the Christian kingdoms were recovering little by little since the 8th century till the 15th century, during the 8th centuries, they were recovering, reconquistando, the whole territories that Al-Andalus, the Muslims, had took in 711. Now, in the 15th century, the only territory that we have is the Kingdom of Granada, okay, or the Nazarene Kingdom. During all the 14th, 15th century, this is going to be like this. Once the Catholic monarchs are going to acquire, uh, uh, start um, uh, governing, they are going to finish with the Reconquista. So, where do they come from? Okay, Isabel and Fernando, you have it here. You have here Isabel. And you hear here y Fernando. It's Isabel the first one from Castilla and Fernando the second of Aragon. Okay, as you can see, their fathers both are called Juan, yes? And at the end here they have an, uh, 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 one of their 
they have here in common. They came from this house, la casa de Trastamara, okay, so they, at the end they were cousins, okay, they were family. This was not so strange in all these, um, in all these uh, uh, monarchs, monarchies, okay. So, as you can see here, the king, we have like two ways of accent, uh, of accents the kingdom, okay. So, we have Isabel la Católica, okay, that is the daughter of Juan II, king of Castilla, and she is the sister of Enrique IV, also king of Castilla. And we have Fernando II, that is the easiest one, that he is the only son of Juan II, so he inherited directly the, the kingdom. Okay, in 14, we have it here, in 1479. Uh, but Isabel, as she is not the direct heir, she has to fight against the legitimate heir, that is Juana la Beltraneja, to be the ruler, to be the, the queen. This started, okay, you have here the Catholic monarchs, he started the civil war. Isabel and against Juana la Beltraneja, they started a civil war that put in a lot of differences between the different kingdoms. Some kingdoms are going and some nobles are going to support Isabel and some kingdoms and nobles are going to support Juan. Through different wars and different battles that we are not going to study, at the end Isabel Okay, sign a, a treatment, a treat where she is going to be uh, crowned as queen in 1479. Okay, in 10 years uh, before, in 1469, they're going to get married. Okay, before they were monarchs, okay, they're going to get married in order to strengthen their power. Okay. Like unit, uh, uni, uh, United uh, Aragon and Castilla. Okay, so after the Civil War, one thing that I didn't explain is why Juana la Beltraneja is called like this. Juana la Beltraneja it was the legitimate heir of Enrique II, uh, but some people said that he wasn't, that she wasn't the uh, Enrique's daughter. So Isabel tried to like focus on that, it's not uh, his uh, real heir because he's not his, uh, she's not uh, his daughter, so I am the legitimate queen. That is why the civil war started, and also because not yet the nobles okay has a lot of things to say, so the nobility is divided into these borders of Juana and the ones of Isa. Okay, so once we have Isabel and Fernando, since 1479, okay, they're going to start the kingdom, the, the rule of the Catholic monarchs, okay? This, okay, this union is a dynastic union. You have here what that means. The rule of the two monarchs was the only thing that they respective territories had in common. These, each territory, okay, maintained the institution, laws, customs, and currencies. That meant that Isabel decided the things that happened in Castilla, but she can't, she couldn't decide what happened in Aragon, and Fernando decided the things that happened in Aragon, but he couldn't uh, do in the things that uh, happened in Castilla. Okay, and every, for example, when they are going to conquer Castilla, that new territory form part of Castilla. Or once they are going to discover America, all America is going to be a part of Castilla, not Aragon. Okay, they are going to have their, their own problems, they are going to have their own institutions, their own laws, etc. Okay, that is not going to be a unification. That is what we call the dynastic union. That is why till now we cannot talk about Spain. It's the kingdom of Castilla and the kingdom of Aragon. Okay, so how are they going to do once they are kings, okay, in order to acquire this authoritarian monarchy? They are going to proceed to like three main stages or four main stages. You have here three. The first one is the religious unification. 
Okay, they are going to create the tribunal, the tribunal of the Inquisition in 1478. Okay, this institution it's important because they are going to persuade heretics and Judaizers. Following this religious unification, they are going to expose the Jews. Okay, that was created in 1492 on the pretext that contact with Jews influenced converts to give up their new Christian faith and become Jews once more. It was very important expulsion of the Jews, but we know from now on the Sephardis, okay, because they uh, have a lot of richness, or a, a lot of wealth, and they were very important in trade and other things. So that affects also the economy and society of the Grand Peninsula of the Castilian King. Also, they are going to apply the conversion of the Moriscos, following the uprising of the Mudejares of Granada, okay, the Moriscos were forced to undergo baptism or uh, leave the kingdom, okay, and following, although this is part also of the territorial exp expansion, okay, they go finish the, uh, they're going to finish the Reconquista by a uh, Conquesting the National Kingdom of Granada. With this, they're going to unify the religion of their kingdom, that is what they call the Catholic monarchs. Also, we have to mention the territorial expansion. Related with this, they're going to finish with the Reconquista, so they finish the expansion in the Iberian Peninsula, and once they finish, Castilla can focus on moving on. That moving on is going to be in the north of Africa. For example, Melilla in 1495, Oran in 1509, Algeciras and Tripoli in 1510, etc. Okay, in all this competition against Portugal, something that we study in Unit 1. Also, they are going to expand through the Atlantic Ocean and they are going to conquest the Canary Island. Okay, and from the Canary Islands conquered in 1496, they are going to spread through the discovery of America in 1492. All this you have to relate it also with, uh, uh, with what um, we study in Unit 1, all the discoveries related with the Duke of Constantinople, etc. The Kingdom of Aragon okay, has nothing to do with all this discovery from Castilla, but they are going to be like a focus in all the things. First, in the Mediterranean, okay, and against France. They have a like long running rivalry with France and this rivalry would lead to the recapture of some territories in France, in the south of France, that is called the Roussillon and the Cerdeña, and the conquest of and the conquest of Naples. Okay? That is going to lead uh, the definitive expulsion of the French from Italy. In order to establish the modern state, that is one of the objectives of all this, okay, they're going to impose their authority over the nobility, the clergy and the municipalities. Okay, this enables them to gain control over the high ranking nobility. They are going to intervene, for example, in the appointment of bishops, and they are going to control the property of the military order. They reduce the autonomy of the municipality by appointing chief magistrates in Castilla and holding lotteries from appointments in Aragon. Finally, they hardly ever summon the Cortes, as I told you before, which was the legislative body that represented the three states. So by reducing the role of the Cortes, they have nothing to ask for. But all the power at the end led into the Catholic monarchs. They are going to reform the administrations, okay, by making the jurists, the civil servants, not depending on the nobility, and creating certain institutions, like for example the Audiencias or Chancillerías, that were the royal courts, the, the, uh, the, the royal courts, in order to apply the laws, the common law, in all the territories. They establish an efficient policy, political economy, and they are going to increase the royal income. Now they need money in order to undertake all these reformations. They created the Santa, Mar uh, Santa Hermandad, for example, the Holy Brotherhood, in order to maintain the social order in rural areas. 
and they are going to also modernize the army by organizing it into regiments called the tertiaries that they're going to be so powerful and famous in the next decades. One last thing that I wanted to talk to you about are the matrimonial relationships. Okay? As I told you, okay, Isabel and Fernando, one of the main objectives were to isolate France. France was the like the main enemy, mainly from Aragon, but also from Castilla, that they don't support them they don't support Isabel during the civil war, so they were the enemy. In order to avoid okay, the Kingdom of France to have Kingdom of France to have any intervene in uh, the in Europe, the Catholic kings are going the Catholic monarchs are going to marry all their daughters and sons with the different heirs of Europe. Okay, as you can see here for example, Isabel Okay, the first son, the first daughter, is going to get married with Alonso from Portugal. You don't need to know all these names, but it's important that you know that, for example, the first one married with Portugal, the son married with Austria, another here with Austria, okay, another daughter with Portugal again, here, for example, with England, okay, England twice. Okay, so referring to the map that you understand how the sons and daughters are going to get married with the different and the most powerful kingdoms in all Europe in order to isolate it, the influence of France. This is very important because the following kings, Carlos I and then Felipe II, they are going to inherit huge quantities, huge territories thanks of the matrimonial alliance of their grandparents okay so till here okay it's everything related with the catholic monarchs i am going to do like short from your book okay i'm going to tell you from your book in order to reinforce and to help you to understand this um this uh, presentation this video from your book you got you have in unit two the rank of the Catholic monarchs. Okay, this is the part. These two pages. It's the main things that I have explained. Okay, what is the dynastic union? Okay, what is the dynastic union? How they are going to stress this power, the power of the state by the territorial unification, the religious unity. Okay, the reformation of the administration. Okay example and the expansion. You have here information about the domestic and foreign policies, okay, with the conquer of the Nashville Kingdom, expulsion of the Jews and the conversion of the Moriscos, okay? And also the different here in this map, the foreign policy, the expansions of um, into Africa, okay, the these cities that I told you about. Canarias and America, and in purple, the main um, territories that Aragon, uh, Aragon uh, conquered during this, during this era. Okay, so you have all the information here. Read this, okay, while before or after you watch the video, okay, you have to, to read these two pages. Okay, so I hope it's clear and you like the video. Thank you.